Welcome to The Nightstand, your favorite nightly talk show that discusses managerial strategies with top business leaders and entrepreneurs that can help you push further and faster into the business world. I'm your host, Zach Rainville. Tonight, we have another very special guest. And thank you for having me tonight, Zach. Oh, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So first of all, I'd like to ask you about companies with similar business models to yours and whether they pose a threat in your eyes, such as Pira Vita bracelets or Warby Parker. Well, I want to start off by saying that Tom's is not my company, that it was a group effort between me and Blake to actually get to that point. Sure. Now, these other companies you mentioned do have a similar business model, but they create a completely different product, even if they are trying to give back in some fashion. I will say that fundamentally, Tom's has always had some type of management to where they can decide what, where, how, or why to produce something, and that has always given us the competitive advantage over these other companies. It's that proprietary idea we have behind the buy one, give one policy, that we are the original for that. The pioneers. Absolutely. Outside of being sort of the pioneers of the industry that you're a part of, what competitive advantages do you think that you have with the company? Well, I like to say that this world does have a lot of need for charity and some type of nonprofit business, and Bleak agreed with that too. So we followed one of those platforms. And um, it was recognized by another company that did offer us a substantial amount of money, uh, their Bain Capital, and that was back in 2014. They offered us $625 million wow. for just half of our company, and they, they based that just off our competitive advantage over others, that strategic platform that we had on a way to decide on what, why, or how to produce something. So I feel that we have maintained some type of competitive advantage over the other companies as well. So if you really had to narrow it down, what, what are the actions that you feel really made your company bloom? Simply put, control. Um, we have a very unique company and everybody's been self-driven since day one and I think that's just because our mission motivated people. Okay. And that's kind of caused us to sprout and, and, and grow further from then. And from there, it became a globalization issue, moving capital goods and ideas across borders and getting our product and mission to where it needed to be. So the industrial environment that a lot of these countries face did pose a lot of challenges for us to actually bring those things into that country. But thus far, that control and being able to have some type of say in what is happening has allowed us to get our, our ideas and our products and mission into over 70 countries today. That's a, that's a big accomplishment. Absolutely, thank you. Can you give us some insight on some of the methods of planning you use to get the company started, and kind of in the roots phase? From day one, it was always about trying to find materials and stitching and, and where to make it and how to make it and who's going to make it. Me being the one who originally made the uh, first pair of Tom's shoes. From there, it all became planning, strategic and tactical planning about where to produce them and, and do we have to outsource or offshore production to, to meet those production requirements that we had. And as we grew, it just made the issue more prominent. What we ended up doing was benchmarking, comparing ourselves to other businesses allowed us to see what they're doing and, and can we improve on that? Can we do things differently or are we doing things differently? Are we on the right track? So planning played a, a massive role in the growth of our company. From there it became, again, globalization. How can we move those ideas that other people are using that we integrated into our own or that we came up with ourselves? How can we further that? And with that, we're going to wrap things up tonight. Thank you again for being our special guest. Your insight and knowledge has been much appreciated. It's been great being here. I'm glad to share. And to all those who tuned in with us tonight, don't forget to tune in tomorrow where we continue to discuss managerial insight that'll help you go further and faster with your business skills.